Hi, and welcome to my guide of the quest Monkey Madness 2. This guide is going to be separated into multiple parts, which all have their own item requirements, suggestions and teleports. I just needed for chapter 1 is a pestle and mortar, grapes, a lemon, which you can buy from the grocery store just east of Blurberry's bar, and then also some regular locks. For the suggestions for part 1 is some weight reducing clothing and one stamina potion should be enough. Also, do not bring any weapons or armor since we're gonna be visiting Entrana for about half a minute. For the teleports is one teleportation method to one spirit tree if you can access that spirit tree within 35 seconds, else running it will be faster. And then also one method back to the Grand Tree from Entrana. The fastest way would be to use one magic lock from Entrana back to the Grand Tree directly. Where to start this quest is the same quest location of the Grand Tree quest and Monkey Madness 1. Let's go to the Grand Tree inside of the Tree Gnome Stronghold and talk to the King. Yes, I will help you look for Glaf. Next, let's head outside. And let's go to Glove's house, just like in the Grand Tree quest, which is located just southeast of the Grand Tree, north of the transportation sign of the hot air balloon that you've already unlocked. In here, go east and climb up to the second floor, just like in the Grand Tree quest. Then behind you, right click on the branch that you've just climbed on and investigate. This will give you a handkerchief. Next, we will need to make our way to Anita's house. Let's climb down the tree and climb down to the main floor. And let's make our way to the most northwestern tree house in the Tree Gnome Stronghold. Once here at the most northwestern house, climb upstairs and talk to Anita. Let's select option 1, what is wrong? And then select option 2, that he could be in trouble. After selecting this, we'll need to make our way back to Glass house. Either run 30 seconds back the way we just came from, or if you have a fast teleport to any spirit tree, then use that teleport and make our way back to Glove's house. Go back to the second floor of Glove's house where we found the handkerchief. Once we've arrived, the northern branch there will now be a climb up option. Do so to the top floor to a new area. First, north, let's search the fire remains to find a note. Next, use your pestle and mortar on the lemon to squish it over the note. Then, in the northwestern corner, search the gnome crate for a brush. Then use the pestle and mortar on the grapes to put the juice on the brush. Then right click on the mysterious notes and use it on the candles just south. Next, use the juice coated brush on the note, and this will give you a scrawled note. Once we have this, let's climb back down and let's return to the king. King nor node. Once we're down, on our way to the king, let's read the scrawled note, close the interface, and then click to continue and you will talk to yourself that we will need to talk to the king. Let's do so. And he will give us a translation book. If he doesn't give you the translation book, then you still have this book from the Grand Tree quest in your bank. That will also kind of mean that you will need to desperately clean up your bank. 
Next, use the translation book on the notes, then click to continue and talk to the king again. After speaking to the king, we will need to once again return to Anita, who is located in the most northwestern treehouse of the Tree Gnome Stronghold. On our way to Anita, we may already drop the juice-coated brush that is no longer needed, as well as destroy... No, not that. Let's talk to Anita and select option 3. Could you translate these notes for me, please? And after speaking to her, let's climb back down and run straight east back to the king. I've tested it out and running straight back east to the king is going to be faster than using a teleport. Let's talk to the king. And next, let's return to Glove's house. South of Glove's house, we will need to talk to Assistant the Smith from the Balloon Transportation. Let's talk to him and select option 3 and then 1. Who are you? And then option 1 to open the map and travel to Entrana. If you are an ultimate Iron Man and you have a regular lock and a magic lock, you can safely drop all the items that are not allowed on Entrana here right now as a trip to Entrana, talking to August and taking the hot air balloon back to the Grand Tree will take about 40 seconds. So all your items will not even be visible to passing players. Here on Entrana, let's select option 1, let's talk about Assistant Le Smith. And after the conversation is over, let's right click on August and fly and select the Grand Tree, or use any other transportation method to go back to the Grand Tree if you don't own a magic lock at the moment. Once back at the Grand Tree, let's return to King Nornode to let him know what we have learned, and this will conclude Chapter 1 of this quest. Next, let's go upstairs and go to the bank in the southwestern corner to prepare for chapter 2. What we will no longer need is the translated note as well as the translation book. You may drop both. For part 2, let's deposit everything from our inventory as well as what we have equipped. What we will need is a light source, a monkey speak amulet and any kind of monkey gree gree. If you do not own any of these two items, then you will have to make new ones before you can continue with this quest. That means that you will need to head to the storage room of Merim to get some dentures, and below the storage room get an emerald mold. With these two items, as well as a gold bar, ball of wool and additional three strange fruits, head through the Monkey Madness 1 tunnels to Zunok to get a monkey bar. Then make your way back to Merim and head to the dungeon underneath the temple to make a monkey speak amulet. With the amulet, you are able to talk to the monkey child to get another monkey talisman. Once you have the talisman, kill any monkey, either on Karamja, Gorilla Guard or a monkey archer for their bones. With the talisman, the bones and additional three strange fruits, make your way back to Zunok to get your monkey Gree Gree. The next part is going to be the Monkey Madness 2 tunnels, and these have two paths. Either it is going to be the Agility path, which will take about 20 minutes time, and the second path is the Tanking and Thieving path. This is going to be taking about 10 minutes. If you're going to be taking the Tanking path, then you will also need to bring along any kind of pickaxe of your liking, as well as a knife or a slash weapon. For the recommendations, if you take the agility or the tanking path, is to bring your best slash and ranged defensive 
gear, as well as about 2 staminas and 2 prayer potions. For the rest of the inventory can be some good food. The best food if you're taking the agility path would be to use summer pies so you can gain 5 temporary invisible agility levels. And then lastly also one strong melee weapon so we're able to flinch Croc if you happen to have some supplies remaining. The best way to defeat Croc would be to simply flinch it, so bring the strongest weapon that you own. Attack speed also doesn't matter since we are going to be flinching. For the teleport, I'm going to be bringing along two teleports to a Madim and two teleports to any bank. Alright, once we are ready, let's make our way to a Madim by simply teleporting straight there. And to get four additional food, I am first going to be dropping four food, then teleporting to any bank, grab four more pieces of food, and then teleporting to Madim once again. And teleport into Marim, and then pick up the four dropped food. All right. So once we are set up, let's hold the monkey Grigri and head downstairs, and let's talk to Garkor, who's located south of the temple. Let's talk to Garkor and select option 1 and then 2. King Nordnode sent me. And then select option 2. It is worth a shot. Next, let's talk to the Elder Guard just south. To enter the throne room. First, equip your monkey's big amulet and then enter the throne room to talk to King Awogi. Let's talk to him and select option 2 and then 1. That you're here to discuss military strategies. Then select option 1, of course my king, because he only discusses these with Croc. Let's exit the room by talking to the Elder Guard and then report to a Garkor. Let's report to Garkor even though he should be able to overhear everything since there are no windows and stuff. Anyway, after speaking to Garkor, let's head west. Let's head to the monkey archers that keep shooting at us during Monkey Madness 1. Keep heading west until you're able to go onto the most western cliff. On this side of the hill, or on the other side, there will be a monkey archer that you're able to talk to. Try to right-click on every monkey archer until you're able to talk to one. Do so, and they will say that Croc is not here. Next, it is time to head into Croc's dungeon. Let's head north, south of the transportation sign. In the middle of the woods, there will find a trapdoor heading to Croc's dungeon. Investigate the jungle grass to head inside Croc's dungeon. Croc's dungeon will have two different paths. An agility path, which will take twice as long as the tanking and thieving path. Let's equip a weapon and pick up our dropped monkey Grigri. Next, let's head a bit south until we see a crossroad where we're able to go east or continue south. The eastern path is the agility path and the southern path is going to be the tanking path. If you have very low agility and you have very strong defensive gear, then you might want to take the tanking path. The tanking path isn't really too difficult, we'll simply need to use protect from missiles and continue through the dungeon, mining rocks and slashing webs until you see a room with some chests. Right click and unlock every chest until you receive a combat damaged key. Then you will need to simply continue through the dungeon, tanking every monkey, mining rocks and slashing webs, 
until you find some devices that you can disarm. In there, the route will be split off into west and north. First, go into the western room and try to use your key to unlock that door. If the route behind that door feels off, which is written in your chat box, then take the northern door. If you do it the other way around and you first check the northern path, and if that is not your correct path, that will mean that you will need to teleport out and do the combat path all over again. So make sure to first check the western door before checking the northern one. And that should take you about 10 minutes to make your way to the big bonfire. Here in the room with two chests. Search and unlock any of them to get a key. Then move on through the dungeon. And hopefully it will work this time for fuck's sake. Right here the path. There's some rocks here though. I'm gonna go to the western room and grab another key. There's probably another key here. Move! Oh. No key. Can I go in through here? I cannot. Okay. Dude! Hit so high. Why do you hit so high? Move! Another chest. Unlock. Is it the only chest in here? Another one. I want this one. Stop hitting so much! Oh my god! The damage! Okay, the northern one, I, I don't know why, but I couldn't pass north. I have no idea how. Uh, I, 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 I just died if I took the other the wrong way.
More chests? Nope, just fire. Only way to go. Only one way to go. Move, 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 move. Ow, bitch. I made it. I made it. All right, this is the campfire. If you take the agility path, then this will be completely random for everyone. Simply follow the quest helper's highlighted tiles to make your way to the first agility obstacle and then try to cross it. If you fail, then there might be something put in your chat box that something about this route feels wrong. There is a 50-50% chance that you will get this message and fail the obstacle. If you do, then immediately use Protect Family and make your way to the northwestern corner. There you will find a rope to go back to the first section of the agility course. Doing so, you will now know that that agility obstacle you will need to avoid. Once again, this is random for everyone and just do the agility obstacles that you are able to cross. If you have a very low agility level, then you might fail that obstacle because of your low agility. Just check every time you fail that is it because of your low agility or is it because the route feels wrong. If the route feels wrong, then just take the other agility obstacle. Do your agility obstacles until you arrive at the massive room with dodgy flooring. There, we will need to obtain a bronze key to continue to section 2 of the agility course. Once you've arrived to the next dodgy flooring, this will be section 2 out of section 1, because you will find a next hole. Once you fall down, you will need to once again continue using Protect from Melee. But this time, instead of going northwest when you fall down, you will need to head straight west. Alright, once you've made it to the massive big floor, which underneath have the massive amount of maniacal monkeys for the best ranged magic and HP XP. Let's follow the highlight from Quest Helper, which is in the middle of the room, head straight east. Until you can't go any further, then go 3 south, then 4 east, 2 north, 2 east, 2 south, and then 2 more east. To go into the room, right-click and unlock the chest. 
to find a bronze key once you search this item. Once you have the bronze key, let's exit and make our way back one west, two north, two west, two south, four west, four north, and then all the way back west, back to the start, and then go north. And let's take the northern path, which is like three east, two south, two east, two north, and then like six east. Yeah, just follow the fucking path. Do not try to go diagonal. This is an OSRS quest, not RuneScape 1 or RuneScape 2. And from this point forward, once we have the bronze key and we have passed this massive dodgy flooring, we are now in section 2 of the Agility Obstacle Course. This is going to be identical to what we've done in section 1. The only difference is when we fail an agility course, either because of our agility level, or second, if the route feels off, this time we will need to use Protect from Missiles instead of using Protect from Lee. And that is the only difference. Also, head south to go back to the start instead of uh, west. Ah, bollocks. Do we need to do that all over again? God damn it, dude. There's no vine here, so I need to go south. There's no vine here either. Fuck me, dude.
What? I need to take the long route, you ass. Can I go through this hole, please? Bitch. all right once you've made it to the end the most northern dodgy floor go through the hole and we will be at the bonfire meeting up with the tanking path takers let's use protect from melee and head west go west and we need to do one more agility route if we fall down here we will need to use protect from melee once again if you fall down Make sure that you check in your chat box that if you fell down because the route was wrong or because of your agility level. Use any of the obstacles, either the ledge or the pillars, depending which one will work for you. And once we have crossed the handholds, let's go to the northeastern corner, investigate the wall to unlock a hidden passage. Next, it is time to fight Croc, the first demi boss of this quest. This boss has a max hit of 33 with a regular attack, and with range, it can hit up to 50. Though, there is a safe spot if you use melee. If you still have quite a lot of supplies and HP remaining, then continue following the dungeon floor southward. If you think you lack supplies, then make sure to teleport to the bank right now and head back into this dungeon. Next to the entrance, there will be a passageway. Go through it to make your way back to this area. 
once you think you are ready, let's use protect from missiles and go through the cavern entrance. And I'll go stand in the northwestern corner. It doesn't really matter which one. And lure Croc on any corner to make him stuck. And now you can simply flinch Croc. Use Spidey, hit it, move away, turn off Spidey and I'll wait for the HB bar to be removed. Once it is, Spidey, hit it and go back in your corner. Do this until Croc is defeated. Alright, once you've defeated Croc, let's take its remains and let's teleport to any bank to restore our stats to prepare to make Croc's Gree Gree. Deposit your light source. Alright, once you have Croc's paw, any Gree Gree, Monkey Speak amulet, as well as 1000 coins, and for the recommendations would be some weight reducing clothing, one stamina potion, and maybe an antidote and a couple of food for the Monkey Madness 1 tunnels. For the teleports, two teleports to Marim, one teleport to the Apatol dungeon from Marim, and one teleport to any bank. Once we are ready, let's teleport to Marim, let's hold our Grigri, as well as the Monkey Speak amulet, and let's head into the magic store which is located next to the scimitar shop, in the center of the settlement. Let's trade the magic shop owner in this alleyway to buy one monkey talisman for 1000 coins. Next, let's run south, or just simply use a teleport into the Apatol dungeon. In this dungeon, let's make our way to the end, to Zunok, to trade a monkey talisman as well as Crux's paw to make Crux Grigri. With Crux Grigri, we will be able to talk to the king to know about their military strategies. 
And that is what we're going to be doing next after obtaining Crux Grigri. Teleport to Marim to talk to Awawagi. Okie do! Once we have arrived at Zunak, let's talk to him and select option one about the mission, and we will immediately get Crux Grigri. Unlucky Monkey Man is one. With this, let's unequip our Grigri, teleport to Marim, then hold Crux Grigri, and let's go talk to King Awogi, located south of the temple. Let's talk to the Southern Elder Guard to enter the throne room. Then talk to Awawagi to learn about the military strategies. After speaking to the king, let's exit the throne room and then talk to Garkor. After speaking to Garkor, let's teleport to any bank to prepare to fight a ogre and a troll. Both the troll and the ogre are safe spotable using ranged magic or a halberd but you can choose any combat style of your liking though if you are going to be using melee that means that you will be taking a lot of damage so i suggest you to simply use ranged magic or a halberd next you will also be needing 20 coins or you must have 71 agility and for the teleports is one teleport to the troll stronghold and one teleport to Gutenoth, located south of Yanil. Both the Ogre and the Troll will hit half damage through prayer. Their max hit is in the 50s, meaning that through prayer they can still hit up to 25. Make sure to bring also some good food. Alright, once you think you are ready, I am first going to be quickly dropping by Ferrox Enclave to restore my stats. And afterwards, let's head to the Troll Stronghold. The fastest way would be to use a Stony Basalt Teleport, second, a Trollheim Teleport, and thirdly, a God Wars Dungeon Teleport on the Gamel's Hilt. If you have neither of these teleports, then you will need to wear some climbing boots and start running from Berthope.
Once here at the Troll Stronghold, let's head south to the Troll Generals. Just like in the Troll Stronghold quest. South of the two generals, they'll find Cobb. Before talking to Cobb, use Protect from Melee and then select option 1 three times. I know about your deal with the monkeys, I'm going to crush you and I accept your challenge. Next, quickly run into the doorway. This will be your safe spot. And then simply defeat Cobb using magic, ranged or a halberd. And once you have nearly defeated Cobb, he will surrender and stop his alliance with the monkeys. And we can continue with our quest. Next, let's make our way to Gutenoth, located south of Yanil. To get to Kiev, who's located at the end of Gutenoth, we will either be needing 20 coins and walking all the way around, just like in the Watchtower quest, or you must have 71 or higher agility to use the shortcut. If you cannot use an Agility Potion or a Summer Pie to boost to 71 Agility, then you will need to run around. At the entrance of Gutenoth, simply run west, go through the gate, and follow the path just like in the Watchtower quest until you see a bridge with a massive gap. Pay the Ogre 20 coins to give you access to jumping the gap. If you have 71 or higher Agility, then simply run south, and climb the rocks directly to Keith. The safe spot for Keith is either the tree standing southeast or the standing torch located northwest. Similar to Cobb, let's use Protect from Melee and talk to him. Select option 1, I know your alliance with the monkeys. Then option 2, I can offer you a life. And then option 1, I agree to your challenge. Defeat Keith by either using the standing torch as a safe spot or you can also use the tree as a safe spot if Keith was standing just a bit east. Unlike the trolls, the ogres don't really have that much range defense so this fight should be a lot faster. After we have defeated Keith and they will stop their alliance with the monkeys, let's make our way to any bank to prepare for the next chapter. For this chapter, we are not going to be needing anything at all. So let's go to the bank and deposit everything from our inventory as well as our equipment. What we will be needing for this part is Krugs Grigri as well as some weight reducing clothing. A monkey speak amulet, one or two stamina potions, as well as two teleports to Marim. 
Once you think you are ready, let's make our way back to Madame to report. After talking to Garkor, we'll be needing to talk to Assistant the Smith, which we have spoken to like uh, almost an hour ago now, who is assisting August with the hot air balloons. But this NPC can be found in one out of four random locations. Next, let's go northwest. Watch out for the Elder Guard, and let's go into the bank in front of the temple. In there, let's climb up the ladder, and then behind the bamboo ladder, we'll find yet another ladder to go to the third floor. Next, right click and pick lock the jail door. If you fail, try again, and then head south. Head south, southwest, until you can't go any further south, southwest. There is the third location of Assistant Le Smith. If he's here, then simply talk to him, select option 1211, and you can skip me going to the three other locations. If he's not there, then make your way back the way we came from, back to the jail door, pick lock it, and go back into the bank. Once back in the bank, let's go a bit northwest into the food store. There, let's climb up the bamboo ladder. Once here, let's go north to the most northern outside of this big bamboo bed. There, we'll find a bamboo ladder. Let's climb up to location two out of four. And let's talk to Assistant Le Smith. If he's here, select option 1211. If he's not here, then go back downstairs and head west. If he's not here, then climb back down and head west. If he was here, then you can skip this and return to Garkor. Let's climb up the ladder, and this is location 3 out of four and for the final location therefore we'll simply need to head back downstairs and let's make our way to the original location of Kruk who's standing on top of the bridge over the massive bamboo gate so therefore just like at the start of the quest we'll need to make our way west on the island to climb on the western cliff and on the western cliff let's climb up the bamboo ladder and on that bridge that is the fourth and the final location of where assistant le smith can be once you've spoken to assistant le smith let's make our way back to garkor near the throne room south of the temple to report All right, after we have spoken to Garkor, after speaking to Assistant Le Smith, we will need to make our way west. Just like in the recipe for disaster, freeing King Awawagi, we will need to make our way west to the western beach of Apatol, where there is the red banana tree. Close to that red banana tree, we will find a rowboat and a monkey guard. Let's talk to the guard and select option 112. And welcome on the platform. This is basically just a massive sorceress garden. 
We will need to make our way to the end of the platform while not being spotted by the monkey guards. The guards can only watch forward. Once the first guard is moving south, let's follow him to the first safe spot between some more crates. You can choose the eastern or the western side. Next, we need to pay attention to two monkey guards. The first one will need to move north, while the second one is moving east. Once they both align, let's go to the next safe spot. And you can do this all the way until the very end. There's also a shortcut how to do this. While you're standing in a corner and the monkey guard is going to turn to that corner, at the same time, turn corner with that guard and he will not be able to spot you. You could do this if you don't want to wait for the monkey guards to be aligned. But this is a little bit more dangerous. When you get caught by a monkey guard, you'll be thrown off the platform and you will have to use the rowboat to get back onto the platform. Basically, having to redo the progress over again. Once at the next safe spot located horizontally, you'll need to pay attention to that same monkey guard. It needs to be on the eastern side and the next monkey guard needs to be moving north. Follow that monkey guard until the next safe spot. Next, we need to pay attention to that same monkey guard. When that one goes south and the next one continues northward, this monkey guard has a very large walking This one has a very large walking range. So if you could cut a corner with this one, that would be a very nice time save. And here we go, we are already at the ladder to go grab some gunpowder. But we first need some satchels to put the gunpowder in. Therefore, we'll first need to continue southward. Continue south when the one monkey guard is going south. And they will see the second outcrop with some compromise support. Once that monkey guard has passed us, let's continue southward. And we need to pay attention to one more monkey guard. Whoa. Just follow that one. Maybe try to cut a corner if you want. But I don't really think that's worth it. Just stand next to the anchor. And then climb up the ladder just east. Next, go south, and here we just need to pass one more monkey guard. When that one goes south, just simply follow it, and then stand in the northeastern safe spot. Next, we need to pay attention to one more monkey guard. That one will need to move southward. And there will be two more safe spots, one in the southeastern corner, and one just a bit south. Use any safe spot to go to the next ladder. Climb down the ladder to the main floor and here will be no guards. Just simply run to the end to find two crates. Search any of them and do this six times to get six satchels. Okay, with the six satchels, let's return to the ladder. We will now need to fill these up with gunpowder. I think the best way to be able to explain this, since if you get caught, you will need to do this route multiple times. Just simply get caught by any monkey guard to get put back to the rowboat. And do the platform over again, just like before. But this time, go to the first ladder instead of the second one. The ladder located north instead of east. Now this route we'll have to do every single time to get some more gunpowder whenever we get thrown overboard and the gunpowder got wet. 
So I think it is a pretty good idea to know about this route. So every time you get thrown overboard, you basically have already memorized how to get your gunpowder back. Once you have made your way to the northern ladder, let's climb up. And let's continue eastward. Here we only need to pass one guard, so simply follow it when it goes east. Then go hide in the northeastern corner, or just simply cut off a corner. Then climb down the ladder, back to the main floor, and here let's go a bit north. Once again, we only need to pass one monkey. When this one goes north, simply follow it and go hide in the northeastern corner. Then when the monkey guard has passed us, Let's continue the platform to a barrel filled with gunpowder. Let's continue to click on it until we get a message in our chat box that says that we have no more satchels to fill. Once we got this message, make sure to not get caught again, else you will have to do this route every single time. Right, let's return up the ladder. Go back stand in the northeastern corner or the other safe spot and return up the ladder. Once on the second floor, go a bit south and use our satchels on the compromised floorboard. This will be satchel number one out of six already placed. Next, let's go back up north and wait for that one monkey guard to do its route back westward, then hide in the northeastern corner and wait for the monkey guard to have passes one more time. Once it has done that, let's return to the main floor. And on every single floor, we will have to use two satchels. The first one that I want to do is moving back the way we came from, back to the rowboat. But do not get caught by any of the monkey guards, else all the gunpowder will be useless. When the monkey that has a large walking range is going westward, simply follow it and hide in the northwestern corner. Once it has passed us, let's go to the next safe spot, but watch out for the next monkey guard. Hide in the safe spot just east if you make it in time, else move up back north. Then simply wait for that monkey guard to have passed us or cut a corner and make our way to the next safe spot.
stand in the next safe spot, wait for that next monkey guard to have passed us, and let's make our way to the first extension of this platform. Once you've arrived on this extension, let's use one satchel on the compromise support. That is already one third of the way done. Next, we'll need to make our way back to the ladder that we just came from. So let's wait for that one monkey guard to move back north and then simply follow it. Uh oh. oh. Oh, uh, no! No! Fuck me! And when they align, let's go north and go stand next to a pillar. Next, there's only one guard that we need to pay attention to, the one with the long range, and go stand in the northwestern corner. All right, south of the northern ladder, let's go to the next floor extension to use our satchel with gunpowder on the next compromise support. And that is the main floor done. Right, let's go back to the eastern ladder. Here we'll need to pay attention to two monkey guards. When the first one goes north and the second one go east, let's follow the one eastward back to the eastern ladder, where we found the satchels, and let's climb up the eastern ladder. Once we've climbed up to the second floor, let's go a little bit east, but pay attention to that one monkey guard that has a short walking range. Ah oh, fuck. You idiot! I wasn't paying attention again. And behind the big crates, just simply stand in the safe spot. Wait for the monkey guard to have passed us. And let's go swing across the vine. Next, we need to pay attention to just one monkey guard. When that one is going westward, follow it and go stand in the next safe spot south. And now we need to pay attention to two monkey guards. The one going from west to east, the one that we have just passed, that will need to be on the eastern side. Then the one going from north to south will need to be south from the crossroad. Let's move north to the next safe spot. There will be one on the eastern side and one on the western side. Make sure to stand on the left or the western side. Then when the southern guard is moving up back north and is close to you, Wait until it has passed you, then move to the right or the eastern side and wait for the monkey guard to move back south. Once it does, you need to pay attention to the northern guard and make sure that it is moving northwards. And follow it. Follow it to the northwestern corner and hide in that corner. Then simply wait for that monkey guard to have passed you. Let's make our way east to the final floorboards where we need to place our satchels on. And that is then the main and the center floor completed. Now we just need to do the ones on the top floor. Let's make our way back south, following the monkey guard, and let's go stand on the western safe spot, not the eastern one. Or if you want to play it safe, then just hide in the northwestern corner again and wait for that monkey guard to have passed you. 
then continue going south and go stand in the next safe spot that you can. Let's return to the swing. And then pay attention to that one monkey guard again with a short walking range, who stand in that safe spot. And then climb up to the top floor. Here, let's go a little bit south and we need to pay attention to just one monkey guard. I need to cut corner here. And let's go hide in the northeastern corner until that monkey guard has passed us. And once it has, let's use a satchel on the gas cylinder. Wow, this is so much easier than what I've done in my previous guides. Alright, that is the first gas cylinder completed. Let's return back north. I'm just gonna cut corners here. I think that is so much easier. Let's go back to the ladder. And next, from the ladder, we will need to make our way westward. Here, we need to pay attention to one more monkey guard. Let's go stand next to the anchor as a safe spot and wait for that monkey guard to have passed us. And then continue westward. Stand in a safe spot between the two crates as the walking range of the next two monkeys overlap. When both of them are walking away from each other, then continue westward to the next safe spot. Do this or try to cut corners. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. All right, once the going north and south guard is going north, let's follow him to the first safe spot, which is going to be on the eastern and the right side. Once it has passed us, let's continue north to the final gas cylinder. Let's use our satchel on it to complete the platform part. Now we can simply get seen, get spotted by any of the monkey guards. To get a free teleport back to the boat, let's climb down the ladder and then the platform will go boom. Congratulations on completing the platform section. Let's make a way to any bank to prepare for the final part of this quest that takes place on Ape at all. And at the bank, deposit nothing, as we will still need Crux Grigri, a monkey speak amulet. In addition, we will also be needing any kind of light source. For the recommendations is to continue using your rage reducing clothing, as well as bringing some melee boosting armor, as in the next part we will be needing to defeat a couple of NPCs without the use of our inventory which means that we cannot use any food, so having some defensive gear will be a little bit helpful. Though we are able to use protection and other prayers. Just make sure that your HP and your prayer points are full before continuing with the next section. And then finally for the recommendations is a hammer and a chisel, though these two are also available at the quest location when needed. For the teleport, two teleports to Marim, I ran out of bananas. And one teleport to the tree gnome stronghold. For me, I think the fastest way would be to use the spirit tree at the grand exchange. Right, once we are ready for the next section, let's make our way back to Marim. Let's equip Crux Grigri and let's return to Garkor, located south of the temple, next to the throne room. Let's talk to him, and after speaking to Croc, we will need to head back into Croc's dungeon. Right, after conversation is over, let's head north and then west. That is located just east of the transportation sign to the platforms, and south of the transportation sign of the hot air balloon that will be unlocked after this quest. We've all been there, so just head west. Once back at the jungle grass, let's investigate it and drop back down. 
into the stronghold. Make sure that you pick up Crux Grigri and then head north. North, next to the monkey bars, let's equip Crux Grigri. And with this Grigri, we can skip the entirety of the dungeon by making our way straight back to the boss room. Next to the boss room entrance and a rope, there will be a passageway now. Enter it north to the laboratory. Let's enter the laboratory by opening the green doors. And next, make sure that you have full prayer points and HP, as well as equipping your combat gear. But still keep your monkey Gree Gree on and then climb on the stunted gorilla just a bit east. Next, climb down the stairs next to the big crates and there we'll find Gluff and three tortured gorillas. Just ignore Gluff and start defeating the tortured gorillas. Defeat all three of them so they all return back into their cages. Once you have defeated the third and the final tortured gorilla, this should start a cutscene of Glove no longer being afraid of the tortured gorillas and escaping its safe place. And then starting the device. Next, let's return back to the stairs, and if you do not own a hammer and a chisel, search the crates until you find a hammer and a chisel. What you get is random. And then climb up back up the stairs and use the holding area to dismount from the stunted gorilla. Next, let's head north. Let's unequip our monkey Grigri, and let's tamper with the device up north to get some sort of onyx. Let's use our chisel on it to destroy it. And I use the deconstructed onyx back on the device to destroy this laboratory experiment. Next, just to be sure, investigate the incubation chamber located on the western or the eastern side and it will say that the mutagen has been successfully corrupted. When it says that, let's return to Garkor and teleporting or running back to Marim. Let's equip the Crux Grigri and let's run back south to Karkor. After speaking to Karkor, we will need to talk to the Elder Guard just south to enter the throne room and talk to Awowogi. And after speaking to Awowogi, we will need to once again talk to Garkor to complete the apatal chapters of this quest. Now there is just one more chapter of this quest remaining, which takes place in the Three Gnome Stronghold. In that chapter, we will need to defeat six more tortured gorillas, two demonic gorillas, as well as the final boss, Clough. Once the cutscene is over, let's make our way to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. And let's talk to the king. To King Nornode.
after speaking to King Narnode, he will redirect us to talk to Neve, who is going to help us with the fight against the tortured gorillas. So, let's exit the Grand Tree, and first, before starting our battles with the first four tortured gorillas, let's first go to the bank located next to Neve to prepare for this fight. Here at the bank, let's deposit everything from our inventory and our equipment. For the first part is to defeat four tortured gorillas, and these can be defeated using any combat style of your liking. For the second part, we will need to defeat two more tortured gorillas, at the same time also two demonic gorillas. And to defeat the demonics, you will need to bring two combat styles. Most commonly used is ranged and melee. For the potions, two prayer potions and one ranged potion would be enough, and then a full inventory of some good healing food. As those two demonics use overhead prayers as well as changing their combat styles every three hits they deal on you, there's also a cheese way how to defeat these demonics, but that will take 20 minutes of AFK hiding. After we defeated those six tortured gorillas, it is time for the final boss fight against Cloth. And because that fight is probably going to be taking quite a lot of high level food, I'm gonna be suggesting to bring one teleportation method to the Grand Tree, so we can stock up on some more high level food before starting that boss fight. To fight Clough the slow and easy way, also the no prayer way, would be to use a dark bow, crystal bow or a magic longbow. There's also a faster pace method, and that will require you to use a Carol's crossbow, but this also works with a regular crossbow, though not that effectively. And because Glove constantly deals quite a lot of damage, bring two rings of recoil. Alright, that is definitely enough. Once you think you are prepared to fight the first four tortured gorillas here inside of the gnome stronghold, by the way, you can use basically every tree as a safe spot. Let's head downstairs and let's talk to Neve. Let's select option 1 twice. And this will start a cutscene. And after the cutscene is over, Neve will become your follower. And at this very step during the quest, you can bring Neve to the chunks surrounding the gnome stronghold. Which means that you can do barbarian fly fishing or be a bank standing while Neve is following you. After having your fun with Neve, or if you teleport away anywhere, then she will be waiting in front of the Grand Tree entrance. Just grab it from there to continue with our quest. Between the Slayer Master of the Trino Stronghold and the Swamp, there will be four Tortured Gorillas. Simply use any of the trees as a safe spot and defeat the four Tortured Gorillas. Though, since they only use one combat style, just use your strongest combat style while using Protect from Melee.
Once you have defeated the fourth tortured gorilla, Neef will talk to you and this will complete the first section of the combat part ending this quest. If you lack some HP and prayer points, then make sure to go to the bank right now before continuing with your quest. Once you are ready to defeat two more tortured gorillas as well as two demonic gorillas, let's go north of the gnome stronghold between the Grand Tree and the Swamp, there we'll find Garkor and an opening through the fence. Pass through the opening and then run northeast. Use Protect from Ali as there will be some more tortured gorillas. Keep going north. Oh. Keep going north until you find a cavern entrance. Enter it and you will get a message saying that this is an instance area. Any item that you drop in here and once you leave, these will be permanently lost, same as the instance area. Though, if you die, all your items will be in the gravestone next to Garkor, next to the small opening in the gnome fence. Here in the cavern, let's follow it. Until a cutscene with Gluff will start. After the cutscene is over, he will spawn two torture gorillas. Once you've defeated the first one, it will spawn the first demonic gorilla. Demonic gorillas change their combat styles every three hits. If they throw rocks at you, that means that it is a ranged attack. If they throw green balls at you, then that is a magic attack. Use your correct overhead prayers. Once you defeated the first tortured gorilla, let's use a combat style that the demonic gorilla is not praying against, while also paying attention to the big overhead rocks that it is shooting. You can defeat the first demonic gorilla this way, or you can also make Neve do all the damage. And if you want her to do all the damage, then you will first need to hit the demonic gorilla with ranged or magic until it changes its overhead prayer to not protect from melee. Once the demonic gorilla is not using protect from melee, then simply run east and hide in the northern safe spot. But make sure that Neve is attacking the demonic gorilla. This can take up to 10 minutes each demonic gorilla. If the northern safe spot does not work, you can also make your way to the eastern side of this big boulder. This is also a safe spot. Neve, do something! Neve! Neve, the fuck! Do something, Neve! Hit the pieces of shit! I did not bring any teleport. Whoopsie daisy. <coughs>
All right, once the first demonic gorilla has been defeated, let's go grab the second one, who should be dropped. Oh, even that one isn't gone. Whoops. Alright, once the second demonic gorilla has been defeated, Glove will remove its Everstone and evolve. Once the cutscene is over, it is time to defeat Glove. This will take quite a lot of high level food, so I'm gonna first go to the bank before doing this section. And I forgot my Grand Tree Teleport, so I'm first gonna go to the Edgeville to go to the bank, then go to Ferox to restore my stats, and from there I'm gonna return to the Grand Tree. To fight Glove, you only need one combat style, so you may go to the bank and deposit your melee switch from the Demonic Gorillas. The fight with Glove has three phases. The first phase is the easiest one, and you can do this phase without taking any damage by simply using any kind of ranged weapon to your liking. For the second phase, Glove will be able to use a ranged attack. To be able to negate all damage from this ranged attack, you will need a long range ranged weapon, such as a magic longbow, dark bow, crystal bow or T bow, or even a crossbow set on long range though using a crossbow will be a lot more difficult to set up. For the third and also the most damaging phase, there will be two methods that I will be showing you in this guide. The first one is the slower, safer for your HP as well as a no prayer, and this will also require you to have a long range weapon, such as a magic longbow, darkbow, crystal bow or t-bow. And the second method is a bit faster paced. This will require you to have a fast paced weapon, such as a Karos crossbow, magic shorebow, blowpipe, 
and it could also be done with a regular crossbow, even though you can only retaliate once instead of twice. Then because the third phase deals a lot of damage, be sure to bring some good healing food, and bringing two rings of recoil will also speed up this fight. For the ranged armor, you can bring whatever you like, if it is just dehyde, void, or anything better. And for the potions, two prayer potions and one ranged potion should be enough. For the teleport, just bring one safety teleport for whenever you run out of food. Now, because this is a guide, I'm going to be showing you that it is possible to use using every single weapon. The dark bow, the magic longbow, the axe bow, as well as the crossbow. You could simply kill Glove using only a magic longbow or only a dark bow. This way you can bring a little bit more food. And that is it. Let's make our way back to the cavern to fight Glove. Okie do, back in the cavern. Let's follow the cavern until we see Glaf. Do not take the darker path, just follow the light blue cyan path all the way around until we see Glaf. There's nothing to see on those darker blue tiles. Alright, here with Glove, Phase 1 only has a melee attack. Just stand in the hallway and shoot it from a distance. Do this for the first 25% of its health. You will know when the second phase starts when a cutscene occurs. Alright, once the second phase has started, let's make our way into the first room. And here we'll find a couple of rocks that are greenish and darkish. We will need to pay attention to the southern rocks. And the black rocks on the southern side, the most western ones, this tile, this column, is absolutely the furthest that Glove's range attack will be able to hit you. So simply mark one tile on this column, or maybe the entire column. To start phase 2, we must try to attack Glove constantly, luring him as deep as possible into the corridor, until his range attack will not be able to hit us. Glove's range attack can hit up to 9 tiles away, but if we stand one tile east from his furthest possible ranged hit, and we use a ranged weapon that can hit up to 10 tiles away, for example, a magic longbow, dark bow, crystal bow, twisted bow, bofa, or a crossbow set on long range, then we should take no damage from Glove's range attack. Alright, once we know this, let's turn on Protect from Missiles and try to get Glove. Try to get him as deep as possible into the corridor while constantly attacking him. If you stop attacking him, then he will just simply return to his man cave. Try to get him as deep as possible. Then you can simply AFK using a longbow, dark bow, or a crossbow set on long range. It is a lot more difficult to do it with a crossbow, however. Come on, Glove, get over here. One more. Get over here. I know you can do it. Get over here. Get over here. 
One tile further. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Good boy. And now even the crossbow will work. Alright, once we have gotten Glove down to 50% health, it is time for the third, as well as the most food-consuming phase. Let's first head into the corridor, but pay attention to the eastern alcoves. The southeastern alcove will have some dark stones. Mark the tile in front of that alcove, as this is the furthest tile that Glove is still able to drag us in. This drag-in attack is magic-based, so for the next part of this quest we will need to constantly use Protect from Magic. Second, and also most importantly, after being dragged in, our auto-retaliate needs to be on as this thing will deal the damage for us. Right, let's go over Method 1. For Method 1, this will require a long-range weapon, such as a Magic Longbow, Magic Combo, Crystal Bow, Scorching Bow, or a Dark Bow. Outside of the aggro range, click on Glove to attack to deal 1 damage, then you will get dragged in, immediately run away, and if you use something not like a Dark Bow, then your Auto Retaliate will deal the second hit. If you use a Dark Bow, that bow is a little bit too slow, and you will need to immediately return back to your safe spot to heal up. A Crossbow, however, does not work with this method. It does work pretty good in Method 2. And you can simply do this until Glove is defeated. Now I do want to quickly mention that there is a method for those that have barely any supplies or stats. But this method will take very long. This method requires a long range weapon set on long range. Before hitting Glove outside of the aggro range, we will first need to pay attention to its HP bar. That may not be visible. Then exit the aggro range again, and just like with the fight with Croc, wait for the HP bar to be removed, and then hit from outside its aggro range once again. This will require absolutely no supplies, just a bit of time. Right, now for method 2. Make sure that we have full HP and prayer. Let's equip our magic shorebow or our carol's exbow. Or you could even use a regular crossbow set on rapid. And constantly use protect from magic. And get dragged in and constantly hit glove while getting dragged towards him. Once you are in melee distance, let Auto Retaliate deal 1 damage, then hit away, and you will have 1 tick clearance to do anything of your liking. Which is most likely either healing yourself, drinking a prayer potion, and if you still are full health, then you can even go in for a second hit, if you have a fast paced weapon such as a Carol's Crossbow or a Magic Shorebow. Just never let Glove hit you with its melee, else it can hit up to like, I don't even know how much.
All right, and that is Monkey. And once you have defeated Clough, congratulations, because we have now completed Monkey Madness 2. Let's continue our conversation with Zunok, and let's run southwest back to the Grand Tree to talk to King Nornode to complete our quest. And congratulations, you've completed the Monkey Matters 2. You are awarded with 4 quest points, 80,000 Slayer experience, 60,000 Agility experience, as well as 50,000 Thieving and Hunter experience, as well as access to the Crash Site Caverns, in which there are Tortured and Demonic Gorillas. And the Mana Gorillas drop Zenite Gems. As well as ability to equip a Heavy Ballista. And various dragons will now drop Dragon Javelin Heads. What we'll also receive from King Node is a Royal Seed Pod. Once we click on it, it will teleport us to the Grand Tree. And this can be used up to level 30 Wilderness. It is also free, if you destroy it, you can simply talk to King Node to get another one. I think. Oh, it costs 2 GP. Anyway. When you return to the crash site entrance, there will be some searchable crates. No, there's only one searchable crate. When you search it, you'll find a monkey that you can wear on your back. This can also be transformed by doing some agility on Ape Tall. Speaking of Ape Tall, when you go to any glider, there will now be an option to glide directly to Ape Tall. Also, none of the NPCs on the surface of Ape Tall, such as snakes and spiders, will no longer be aggressive to use, so Grigris are also no longer required. Except for the Croc or Ninja Grigri if you want to do some Apatol agility, or whenever you want to transform this backpack monkey. The other Grigris are basically useless. As well, on Apatol you're now able to communicate with monkeys without equipping a Monkey Speak amulet. As well, you now have access to the bank here on Ape Tall. Second to last, when we return to Crux Dungeon and we equip Crux Grigri and make our way back to Glove Laboratory, there will be a new hunter location where we can hunt maniacal monkeys. At level 60 hunter, you can expect up to 60,000 hunter experience per hour. And this goes up to 120,000 XP per hour at 99. If we head over to the Monkey Archers next to the Big Bamboo Gate and go on to the Eastern Cliff, there we'll find the monkey called Duke. Talking to him will reward us with 50,000 experience that we can spend on either Attack, Strength, Defense, Hit Points, Ranged or Magic. And this 50,000 experience we can spend on two skills. I think I'm just going with defense since that is literally my lowest stat at the moment. <laughs> I had to train defense to not get Tears of Gatha XP on it. And this was my updated guide how to complete Monkey Madness 2. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, yeah, thanks, bye. Oh fuck, I'm dead, aren't I? <laughs> what the fuck was that?